Welcome back, Commander. In this video, we'll be featuring the Latin Confederation as a Soviet subfaction from a Red Alert 2 mod called Mental Omega. Mental Omega is a free unofficial expansion pack for Command and Conquer Red Alert 2 Yuri's Revenge. It started off as a balance modification created by Speeder and Mevitor, and was first released in 2005. After a few years, it had grown into an unofficial sequel with new campaigns for the Allies, Soviets, and Yuri. Now, Version 3.3 marks the end of the long road and is the final iteration of the Mental Omega mod series. Enhanced with the powerful Ares expansion DLL, Mental Omega 3.3 introduces an entirely new faction to the play, the technologically advanced Phone Revolt, as well as continues to bring new features to Command and Conquer Red Alert 2 Yuri's Revenge, while maintaining a strong sense of gameplay balance. But before we begin, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel so we can help deliver more info on the battlefield. The Latin Confederation is the South American branch of the Soviet regime. Since it cannot reliably depend on high-end weapons research or the technological support from their Soviet allies as much as their peers, guerrilla warfare and quick unpredictable strikes are their commonplace tactics. As the Confederation's army is primarily made up of outdated Soviet weaponry, the concept of using smoke to decrease enemies' effectiveness in battle as well as heavy use of napalm of various kinds, has long been incorporated in its tactics. Their excellent infantry support and the highly skilled sharpshooter, Mora less greatly complement this strategy. Fast as a panther and just as deadly, the Latin Confederation is a deceptively powerful force on the battlefield. Jose Arcadio Mora less, or just Mora less for short, used to be part of an elite Cuban death squad trained to silence political dissidents in the communist state. Due to his infallible aim and his unwavering loyalty to the Confederation, he quickly became one of the top assassins in South and Central America. Jose's track record for completing seemingly impossible missions is the stuff of legends in the Americas. Morales is equipped with an incendiary, armor-piercing sniper rifle, allowing him to eliminate all infantry in his line of fire with a single shot. When ordered to fire on a vehicle, Morales will kill the operator of the target leaving the vehicle a sitting duck for the Confederation troops to capture. On top of his incredible skills and a powerful weapon, Mo Robles has the authority to call in a tactical nuclear airstrike upon enemy structures as well. More of a hideout, storage and assembly facility than a research site, the battle lab is where the Latin Confederation's engineers put together their explosive traps, repair napalm weapons, and produce smoke bombs. It is said there are no secrets hidden in a Latin Confederation's battle lab as there is no big science behind their weapons. They utilize what is deemed outdated by many, sold to the countries of the Confederation by the Russians after the latter modernized their arsenal. However, in the hands of this unpredictable army, these old weapons might be used in ways not seen before. The mortar ambush support power instantly spawns three mortar quads that will instantly ambush the enemy at the designated position. Smoke Bombs is a support power that will drop a long series of smoke bombs on the battlefield with a dedicated sandstorm aircraft to decrease the fire power of enemy units in the designated area by 50% for a short period of time. The Flame Tower support power spawns a modernized flame tower that emerges from a ring of fire at the designated position. The unleashed fire will damage infantry nearby. The smoke turret is a simple but useful contraption that launches volleys of smoke projectiles that blind their enemies if they do not possess adequate navigation equipment. The smoke turret is cheap, effective, and has a great range. With enough spread of the weapon it fires, it can easily decrease the combat potential of incoming enemies, including some of the artillery units. The concept of a fast anti-armor harasser has circulated through the halls of the Soviet army before but never developed into fruition after the initial blueprints for an attack cycle went suddenly missing. The Latin Confederation, however, has continued with a different, more improvised approach. Welding armor-piercing mortars to high-powered quad bikes make for a simple, yet effective way to destroy vehicles from a distance. The quads are now used by the Confederation's mechanized infantry battalions in order to quickly destroy enemies from afar, often utilized from inside of their catastrophes. Somewhere between the wicked crazy Ivans and the careful saboteurs are the arsonists, the Latin Confederation's masters of silent and unexpected building demolition. 
capable of wearing a disguise just like the saboteur or the allied spy, the arsonist can get past enemy defenses and forces that are unable to see through the trickery and set enemy units or buildings on fire. This fire is especially useful for causing havoc in bases that are not protected well enough as it is guaranteed to take down at least a building or two if planted successfully. The arsonist will not lose his disguise while setting things on fire, however, an engineer might be able to get rid of the napalm charge before it is set off. The Jaguar, befitting of its name, is a nimble light tank used primarily in jungle warfare. Capable of cutting through the brush at high speeds, the tank can ambush and quickly take down its prey. Its low cost allows it to be produced in mass numbers, though its fairly poor armor means it has to rely on its quick movements to evade destruction. Even if the Jaguar is destroyed, the driver can often escape relatively unharmed thanks to a myriad of fail-safes, allowing him to capture any empty vehicles on the battlefield. In dire situations, all Jaguar drivers are equipped with explosive vests for a last-ditch attempt to cripple or wound enemies. The Latin Confederation, preferring speed over durability, have replaced the demolition trucks in their arsenal with the lighter and much faster bomb buggies. Though retaining almost the same destructive powers as their slower brethren, they are much more fragile, making it imperative for them to avoid enemy fire of any kind in order to be effective. Latin Confederation's Fury drones keep hiding where they're least expected, buried deep in the ground and completely invisible to their enemies. When the right moment comes, they ambush them by jumping out of the hole they dug and exploding at the moment of impact. Fury drones are perfect infantry and vehicle killers, however, they do not become active until they are deployed. Their position can be changed even after the drone has already hidden itself, but if found out it'll be destroyed as easily as the terror drones or if proper weapons are used against them. Once a Fury drone makes a jump, its explosion cannot be stopped. The Catastrophe Tank, living up to its name, leaves destruction everywhere in its wake. Though the Latin Confederation does not possess the budget like Russia or China, has to develop technologically advanced tanks like the Apocalypse or the Tesla Cruiser, they were still able to cobble together a very potent weapon. Built around a powerful ramjet cannon that fires high-velocity projectiles, this monster tank sports a high-end missile launcher to protect itself from aircraft as well. What's more, the Catastrophe tank has room and a special gun port for a single passenger to boost its hefty firepower even further. The heavy flamethrower system, known better for its nickname, Hurrah Tino, was one of the Soviet Union's finest artillery pieces in between the Great Wars. However, when the successor to V2 in the form of the new Scud launcher was introduced with its superior range and damage to enemy structures, the Hurrah Tino was phased out and retired from active duty. But as the Third Great War progressed, the Latin Confederation was given a green light to mass-produce Buratinos for assaulting American fortifications. Now the Buratino stands as a vital asset for the Latin's arsenal. The warheads that the Buratino fires contain a combustible liquid that produce a high-temperature cloud of flame followed by a crushing shock wave. Additionally, the unit can switch between two firing modes for its thermobaric rockets, precise and spread. This makes the Buratino a great weapon for destroying enemy structures and killing groups of infantry. The Vulture is a uniquely versatile helicopter combining a fast attack chopper to chase and mow down infantry and a light Kirov-like bomber unit when ordered to deploy. With a special napalm bomb, the chopper is capable of setting the ground below on fire, making it an effective barrier for enemy infantry and light vehicles. While its set of machine guns is quite a powerful weapon on its own, due to its thin armor, Vulture should be protected from even the feeblest of anti-aircraft forces. This ends the Subfaction Spotlight series for Mental Omega mod for Red Alert 2. If you want more Subfaction Spotlight series like these, please click the like button and comment down below on what you want to see next. It will greatly help me deliver more top secret info to you and to our comrades. Until next time, Commander, Battle Control, Terminated.